You think you know what reality is. You think you see the world as it is. You think you are a physical being in a physical universe. But what if you are wrong? What if everything you perceive is a lie? What if reality is not made of matter, but of mind? This is the startling idea that I want to share with you. It's called the theory of conscious realism, and it challenges the most fundamental assumptions of science and philosophy. In this video, you'll get to know how this theory works, what evidence supports it and what implications it has for our understanding of ourselves and the cosmos. I will also address some of the most common objections and questions that this theory faces, such as how it solves the hard problem of consciousness, how it relates to quantum mechanics. Hey, this is Theos and you are watching The Cosmological Reality, where we unravel the inner workings of the universe piece by piece. Conscious Realism It's a theory of consciousness and reality proposed by cognitive scientist Donald Hoffman. He claims that the physical world of space, time, and matter is not the ultimate reality, but a user interface that we create to interact with a realm of conscious agents. These agents are the only real entities, and they communicate with each other through a universal language of conscious experiences. You may wonder how this theory works and what evidence supports it. Well, let me tell you a story. When Hoffman was a kid, he loved to collect insects. He was fascinated by their diversity and complexity and wanted to know how they see the world. He learned that some insects, such as bees, can see ultraviolet light which is invisible to us. And then, realized that different creatures have different ways of perceiving reality and that none of them is necessarily true. He wondered if there is a reality beyond our perception and how we can access it. As a curious kid who loved to collect insects and wonder how they see the world, Hoffman grew up to become a scientist who decided to test his idea. He used mathematical models and computer simulations to study how evolution shapes our perception of reality. He discovered that organisms that see reality as it is have less chances of survival than organisms that see reality in a way that is useful for them. He named this finding the Fitness Beats Truth Theorem. In addition, Hoffman found out that his theory has implications for our understanding of ourselves and the cosmos. He argued that his theory can solve the hard problem of consciousness, which is the question of how physical processes in the brain can give rise to subjective experiences. He said that his theory can also explain how quantum mechanics can be compatible with general relativity. One of the fascinating problems that Hoffman tackles is the mind-body problem, which is the question of how the mind and the brain are related. For centuries, we have tried to understand how the mind, which is invisible and immaterial, can arise from the brain, which is visible and material. How can a lump of flesh produce thoughts, feelings, and consciousness? The mind-body problem is not only a philosophical puzzle, but also a scientific challenge that requires us to explore the phenomenon of consciousness. Some researchers like Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff think that quantum phenomena may be happening inside our brains and that they may have something to do with consciousness. But this is a very speculative idea and there is no clear evidence or theory to support it. How do you connect the dots between the physical and the mental, between the objective and the subjective in a mathematical way. Hoffman's theory of reality challenges the conventional view of physics. He proposes that to understand consciousness we should not start from physics, but from consciousness itself. He suggests that reality is composed of conscious agents, which are entities that can have experiences, make decisions, and act on them. These agents communicate with each other through a universal language of conscious experiences. He claims that space, time, and matter are not fundamental, but emergent from more basic conscious experiences. He also argues that quantum physics is not a description of the objective reality, but rather a description of the interface that we use to interact with other conscious agents. This view can explain some of the paradoxes of quantum physics, such as the double slit experiment, the measurement problem, and the entanglement phenomenon. He also shows that quantum physics can be derived from a mathematically precise model of consciousness on his theory. To understand his theory better, let us use an analogy. Suppose you are looking at a painting of a beautiful landscape. 
You see the colors, the shapes, the textures, and the details. You feel the emotions that the painting evokes in you. You have a conscious experience of the painting. But what is the painting really? Is it a faithful representation of reality? Or is it a creation of the artist's mind? The painting is made of canvas paint and brush strokes. These are the physical components of the painting. But they are not what you see or feel. You see and feel something else. Something that is not physical. Something that is mental. The painting is a symbol that you use to represent some aspects of your conscious experience. It does not cause your experience, but rather reflects it. Hoffman's theory says that the same is true for the brain. The brain is like a painting. It is made of neurons, synapses, and electrical impulses. These are the physical components of the brain, but they are not what you think or feel. You think and feel something else. The brain is a symbol that you use to represent some aspects of your conscious experience. He also states that this view can explain some of the phenomena that are hard to account for by materialism, such as free will, qualia, and self-awareness. Free will is the ability to make choices that are not determined by physical laws or external factors. Qualia are the subjective qualities of our experiences, such as the redness of red or the sweetness of sugar. Self-awareness is the ability to recognize oneself as a distinct entity from others and the environment. These phenomena are often considered to be the hallmarks of consciousness, but they are also the most difficult to explain by materialism. Hoffman's theory of reality is not only radical but also testable. He says that his theory can make different predictions than standard physical theories, such as general relativity and quantum field theory, in certain situations and experiments. For example, he says that his theory can explain why the universe is expanding faster than expected without invoking dark energy or a cosmological constant. He also states that his theory can account for the origin of life and the evolution of complexity without relying on natural selection or random mutations. But how does Hoffman derive his theory from consciousness? He uses a mathematical model of conscious agents which he calls the Markovian monodology. To understand this, imagine you're playing a game of chess. In this game, each piece on the board is like a person thinking and making decisions. Now, if you want to guess what move your opponent will make next, you could use a special way of thinking called a model. This model looks at where all the pieces are and how they usually move. It's like a strategy guide for playing chess. Now let's talk about how Hoffman's idea works. He imagines that each person or conscious agent, is like a chess piece. These people have their own ways of thinking and acting, just like chess pieces have their own rules for moving. Hoffman also uses something called a Markov chain. This is a fancy way of saying that what someone does next depends on what they did before. For example, if a person is happy, they might do something that makes them even happier. If they're sad, they might do something to cheer themselves up. By putting all these ideas together, Hoffman creates a way to think about how people interact and how their actions affect each other. Just like in chess, where different pieces move in response to what other pieces are doing, Hoffman's model shows how people's actions can affect each other and lead to big patterns, like the rules of how things work in the world. In simpler terms, Hoffman's model helps us understand how people's thoughts and actions can shape the world around us, kind of like how chess pieces move around the board based on the rules of the game. He shows how this model can generate the laws of physics, biology, and psychology from the dynamics of conscious agents. While Hoffman's theory of conscious agents challenges the conventional view of physical reality, it also acknowledges the importance of evolution. Evolution is the process that has shaped life on Earth for billions of years. It is the process that has given rise to the diversity and complexity of living organisms, from bacteria to blue whales, from fungi to flowers, from ants to humans. But how does evolution work? How does it create new forms of life from existing ones? How does it account for the origin of life itself? These are some of the questions that scientists have been trying to answer for centuries. The most widely accepted theory of evolution is the theory of natural selection, proposed by Charles Darwin in the 19th century. Natural selection is the idea that organisms with traits that help them survive and reproduce in their environment 
will tend to pass on those traits to their offspring while organisms with traits that hinder their survival and reproduction will tend to die out. Over time, this process leads to the adaptation and diversification of life forms. But natural selection is not the only factor that influences evolution. There are other factors such as genetic drift, gene flow, mutation, and recombination that can also affect the variation and inheritance of traits. Moreover, natural selection is not a simple and deterministic process. It is a complex and stochastic process influenced by chance, history, and contingency. It is a process that can produce both order and chaos, both harmony and conflict, both beauty and horror. But what if natural selection is not the ultimate cause of evolution? What if there is something else behind it, something more fundamental, something more mysterious? This is the question that Hoffman asks in his theory of reality. He challenges the conventional view of evolution and proposes a radical alternative. He says that natural selection is not a blind and random process, but rather a guided and creative process. He says that natural selection is the result of the interactions and the choices of conscious agents who shape their own interfaces and their own realities. He says that this view can explain some of the features of evolution, such as the origin of life, the origin of consciousness and the origin of human intelligence. Hoffman's theory is a bold and fascinating idea, but it is also a controversial and provocative idea. It goes against the mainstream scientific view of evolution, and it raises many questions and objections. How do we define and measure consciousness? How do we identify and communicate with conscious agents? How do we test and verify Hoffman's predictions? How do we reconcile his theory with our common sense and everyday experience? These are the questions that need to be answered. More research is needed to see if Hoffman's theory is true, or if it is just a beautiful fantasy.